give up 57 points a game on average this season. The bad news for them is they only average 57 points a game at the other end. So that's one area the Terriers might be able to take advantage. The first shot of the game is with one on the shot clock for Jordan Miner to get Merrimack on the board. Jordan Miner coming off his first double-double of the season last game and that win over Hartford had 12 rebounds to go along with that career-high 25 points. That's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I'm curious to see if the Terriers will help out when he catches it that low in the block. Yeah, Miner had an outstanding shooting night in that game against Hartford. Eight of 11 from the floor, nine of 10 from the line against the Hawks. The Terriers against this frenetic 2-3 zone that's kind of a takeoff on the Syracuse zone defense. Souk Matone misses his first shot of the day and Fletcher Tynan getting involved in the rebound and he'll get two free throws. Yeah, Fletcher Tynan was able to take that away from Ziggy Reed. Ziggy Reed got the rebound. Souk Matone fading away with that jump hook shot. Now the Terriers got it to the short porch. That's where you want it to be against that zone, but that's where Souk's just got to go up strong. But Fletcher Tynan keeping the play alive with the steal on Ziggy Reed and now a chance to go to the free throw line. You look at the Merrimack numbers, Brian, as a team, and you wonder how do they have a winning record at this point in the season? We talked about only averaging 57 points a game on offense as Tynan makes the first free throw. How about this number? Merrimack is minus 12 on the boards on average yeah. so far this season, and they actually are bigger up front than they were two years ago when the Terriers battled them literally right to the buzzer in a two-point BU win in North Andover. Yeah, they're getting hurt on the glass. There's no doubt about that. But where they make up for it is forcing turnovers. Six blocks, 10 steals a game. That's something the Terriers have not been able to do is really force turnovers. BU will hold their ground in the 30-second shot clock, but they haven't been able to force turnovers. That's something Merrimack loves to do. From the corner, Mikey Watkins, he is dangerous. Although he's had trouble getting his shot going this season, he's shooting only 38% coming into today, and he takes more shots from the floor than any other Warrior. McCoy, couple of nice ball fakes. Terriers keep it moving. Harper can't cash in on the three. The weak side board, though, for Souk Matone. Second offensive rebound already for BU, and that's a terrific slide step move to the three for Javante McCoy. Uh, Javante, his three games in Florida, he was eight for 13 from beyond the arc. So this is a member, uh, Javante McCoy, during his career here at BU. His three-point shooting has gone down every year, with the exception so far of this year as Ziggy Reed misses a comeback three as well. Back on offense are the Terriers. Again, Miles Brewster making his first college start in his sophomore year out of Brooklyn and the Hotchka School in Lakeville, Connecticut, where Miles was a two-time captain and played with Kyle Jenkins who's now at Lafayette, and Fletcher Tynan creates contact once again. This foul's gonna be on Mikey Watkins for Merrimack. Well, we always joke about the fouls drawn column. Well, so far, Fletcher Tynan's winning that battle here in the early going, already two that he's drawn. But the Terriers against that zone, one thing Joe Jones talked to his team about in the game against Florida State is you've gotta make quick decisions. Look, be able to make the pass and make quick decisions. That last possession, the Terriers were holding the ball a little too long. Brewster can't hit the fadeaway. Watkins with the rebound. And that's what Merrimack wants. They want teams to shoot elbow jumpers, fadeaway jumpers. That's their game. Ziggy Reed misfires, and the Terriers are all over the rebound. Ziggy Reed 0 for 7 from the field last game. He's shooting under 20% for the season. So he's just trying to get things going. 0 for 2 here in the early going of this one. McCoy makes a move. Great extra pass. Good ball movement again by BU. Brewster hits the side of the backboard. But that's the execution against the zone, where you're able to prod the defense, make them converge, and then make the extra pass. And the Terriers, again, that's something we've talked about all season so far, is they have been so selfless with the ball, making the extra pass. Unfortunately, that one just was a, an errant shot. Reed gets it to Daring, and he drills the three to tie the game at five. Michael Daring, local kid out of Boston, played at Brighton High, then on to Proctor Academy. Won a state title at Brighton High his junior year. He has two city championships as well while he was there. Harper, nope, 
And out of bounds, last touch by Merrimack. Doug, what I was going to say about Her uh, about Daring is that his three-point numbers have been off the charts so far this season, shooting over 50% from the field. And you may have heard in the background assistant coach Mike Quinn from BU yelling to Miles Brewster, get out there, get out there. Daring is one of their primary three-point weapons, and he had an open look in the corner. Yeah, Daring now has 21 threes already this season here in game eight. The most on the Warriors. Great feed from Brewster into Tynan, but the Terriers keep it moving, and Souk Matone gets it point blank. That's terrific ball movement. And there was movement even without the basketball. The ball was moving quickly. Jonas Harper again dribble in. All of a sudden, you have players converge, and then the drop-off pass. And Souk Matone, man, that guy has to go on the floor sometimes to pick up some tough passes from his guards, and that one he gets two for BU. Watkins finds his man and the conversion by Jordan Miner, who has four early points in this one. Well, this already reminds you of the game two years ago. It's yeah. just th this is the way they these two teams play. They are methodical in the half court set and they can defend. Tied at seven. Daring and That's Watkins. <laughs> Daring and Watkins up at the top of this two play able to save it. Shot clock at eight. McCoy will shoot over the zone and drill it. What a shot for Javante McCoy. He's got six. Well, he's playing at a different level in his grad year. Yep. I mean, this is this is the Javante that we kind of joked around about playoff Javante. He has just <laughs> been able to take over games, yep. and he's doing it now on a consistent basis. He now has 18 threes on the season to lead BU. That runner by Malik Edmead off the bench doesn't go. Edmead just 5'10" but he is an important player in this Merrimack rotation out of Deer Park, New York. Tynan will bring it back out. The Terriers sticking with their starting five here in the second game segment. Matone got swallowed up inside. Fletcher Tynan open for the three. Why not? Well, these, this was a kickout three, and that's what you want to see. So the Terriers working hard to get the ball in the paint. You've got to have paint touches. That's something that the Terriers have talked about. Suk Matone coming off a career-high four assists in that game against Florida State, and then you see paint touches and kick out, and Fletcher Tynan having a nice start. He's got five in this one. BU has still not committed a foul in this game more than six minutes in. Mikey Watkins answers with a three for Merrimack. Well, I have a feeling both coaches are probably a little surprised about the score here six and a half yeah, minutes into this that's one. True. Uh, certainly shots are going down, and when you can hit threes, that's obviously where that zone is not as helpful. And it'll be curious to see if the Terriers continue to do this job picking this apart. Will they make that switch? Miles Brewster with the tough bounce pass through the paint. Tynan will try again and hit again. Fletcher Tynan with seven early points to lead BU here. Uh, you talk about just confidence, and you just see it now with this Terrier team. That was, I think, what we were talking about Wednesday night, is this different level of this team that you see guys saying, okay, I understand my role, and now I'm going to even do more than my role. And, and Fletcher has really been that, that, that person in this game uh, for the last couple for the Terriers. Ziggy Reed misses from outside. Well, that's especially important, too, with all these injuries yes. piling up for BU. The Terriers with, in essence, three of their core players, their top rotation guys, all out as Souk Matone gets fouled down low. What a pass that time by Tynan. He threw a fastball into Souk Matone right into the chest so he didn't have to bring the ball down. But, Doug, it's interesting. We talked to Joe Jones before the game, and I asked him about his rotations, and he kind of said, I don't really know quite yet. We're, we're still kind of mixing and matching right now, and we didn't see any substitutions at that first media timeout. But here they are with 12.48, Anthony Morales, Malcolm Chemezi, and Damon Tate, who had a season-high 12 points when he only had two the rest of the games this season into the game. Tate with the skip pass. Terriers whip it around the perimeter, trying to find the weak spot in that Merrimack defense. McCoy, baseline for Chemezi, the freshman, going up strong. Well, Javante McCoy, that was just a great move baseline. Keep the ball moving. Anthony Morales almost lost his footing, did a good job kind of getting it back together and move the ball. Keep this Merrimack defense moving. Inside, nice, well, it would have been a nice feed, but Jordan Meyer couldn't hang on to it, so back the other way after the turnover. Merrimack doesn't turn the ball over very often. McCoy can't take advantage, but he does get fouled. Only 11 turnovers a game on average for Merrimack. 
And we talked about how they force turnovers. That's a big part of their attack. They force 18 turnovers per game. But I started to say with the foul situation, BU still has not committed a foul. Merrimack doesn't get to the line very much. They're averaging only 12 free throw attempts per game. By comparison, the Terriers are averaging 17 a game. Well, you mentioned the big numbers, but the fact that the Terriers have not had a turnover here in this first half, th that's something that Joe Jones yep. and the coaching staff have just been saying. If we limit turnovers, we're not only going to be in every game, you're going to win a lot of games. And certainly you look at the way this run has been for the Terriers that is now extended to 12-2, to two, and now they have their largest lead of the night as well at 19-10. to 10. Javante McCoy will take a breather now. Good start for him today in this one as Garrett Pasco comes in for the first time today. Terriers resting four starters now right. before this media timeout, which you'll get right now. And there it is. Jonas Harper, the only top 10 in hairstyle as well. There you go. <laughs> Minor. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm qualified to I talk about that. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Minor gets fouled inside. And the first foul of the day for BU. And incidentally, that Merrimack turnover right before the last timeout, that's the only turnover of this game so far. That's right, yeah, there's one just on Merrimack, that's it. But Merrimack will inbound to the right of their basket now. As again, what we've seen is they've been trying to, against the Terrier defense, they've been really delegated to the outside. They've hit a couple of outside jumpers as well. That BU foul was on wow. Malcolm Chemezi and a great spin move by Mikey Watkins to beat Anthony Morales to the, the rim. In the game two years ago in North Andover, the Terriers did not have an answer for Mikey Watkins. Off the dribble, he was just able to do anything he wanted. And that time off the switch with Morales, as the Terriers were switching one through four, he was able to get his matchup. Garrett Pasco. And inside, I believe that was intended for Jonas Harper, yep. but he had cut through the lane. Harper still the only starter on the floor for BU, and Miner gets fouled underneath. That may be on Malcolm Chemezi again. It is. That's going to be two quick ones on Malcolm in uh, less than a minute of playing time. So he has two points and two fouls in less than a minute. Terriers go eight and a half minutes without committing a turnover, though, which is a good sign for BU. But you can see how quickly, you know, teams are not able to really score against the Terriers in half-court sets. It's really been in transition that has really burned the Terriers. That and second chance points. Watkins keeps it moving. Miner will power his way inside again. Souk is there to challenge. Second chance for Miner. He'll go to the line. Well, something that Merrimack can do differently than you'll see other teams is they'll play their bigs much higher, outside the three-point line even, and that's where Miner caught the ball, and he's athletic enough to put, his, the, put the ball on the floor and dribble in. Most of the times you see teams, they don't want their big men anywhere near the three-point line because if they start dribbling from there, it's usually a steal. Miner with that athleticism and the handle was able to go one-on-one, -on -one and it's tough for Souk to kind of backpedal that entire way. I mentioned uh, Burt Hamill a moment ago, the legendary coach of the Merrimack Warriors, coached there for 36 years before retiring in 2016 and turning the reins over to Joe Gallo, his former point guard. The court in North Andover where the Warriors play has been rededicated as Hamill Court in honor of their former coach. Although now they've been able to play a game at Lawler Arena as well. Yes, that was big news this year for the Warriors, getting to play the first ever basketball game at Lawler Rink, the host of the men's and women's hockey teams at Merrimack. And they've already got a couple more games planned there this year with perhaps more to come because it was such a big success. Oh, that's a great feed underneath, but Miner can't convert it. Jensen with a great pass down low, but Miner could not hit it. That was a bunny, and he had two shots at it and still couldn't put it down. Devin Jensen in off the bench, a grad student from Brielle, New Jersey, wearing number 14 for Merrimack. BU leading by four. They had it up to nine. McCoy gets swallowed up by Miner. Here comes Daring into the front court. Well, Javante picked up his dribble, and there was nowhere to go. And so either it was a turnover or he was trying to shoot that ball. And either way, the block, which we talked about, Merrimack, very good blo uh, shot block. That's their first of the game. Oh, good defense by Garrett Pasco. First, he made it difficult for Miner to catch that pass. And then he stood strong when Miner made his move and he draws the charge. Uh, that's just sticking your chest out and absorbing it. He knew that that was either going to be a layup for Miner or an offensive foul, and Garrett Pasco was willing to 
take the heat right there, and the Terriers get the ball back. Just the second turnover for Merrimack. BU has had two in this last minute and a half as well. And that is the second personal on Jordan Miner now, so that's something of concern for Joe Gallo. And Reed also has two for Merrimack. Off target is Morales. That'll be tipped out of bounds. It'll be Merrimack ball. Yeah, that one went off Suk Matone, who that ball just kind of ricocheted off the bottom of the backboard right there. Again, the Terriers, they do not want to get three-point happy. And what I mean by that is when you're going up against the 2-3 zone, it's very easy to think I'll just take a step in and shoot over it, continue to move the basketball. Right now, we haven't seen this unit. The starters were terrific moving the basketball. We have not seen it from the bench. Mikey Watkins makes the move around Garrett Pasco for the easy two. Watkins now leading Merrimack. He's got seven, and those are the ones that the Terriers just they haven't really given that up much this season. And those are the ones you can't uh, can't give up, those easy layups. Travel. Underneath, Damon Tate couldn't control his feet. BU's second turnover. The Terriers in a bit of a drought right now, Brian. They had the lead up to nine, but they've gone just about three minutes. Yeah, plus three without 11. scoring. Yeah. yeah, three minutes, 11 seconds in that time. Merrimack's put up a 6-0 run, and it's a three-point game all of a sudden. And again, this was, uh, when, when we talk about, you know, you need more from the bench, the Terriers, uh, Damon Tate and the team against Florida State, they got bench points, they got bench production, yep. they got solid minutes. But right now in that three minute stint, they have not been able to get that offense and help out. Reed thought about the step back. Jensen now working the baseline. The shot clock at eight for Merrimack. Reed will take a second go, gets rid of it. Miner for three, and it's short. Again, the rebound, all BU. Well, Miner has taken a couple threes. That's his fourth attempt this season, has yet to knock one down. The Terriers will let him shoot it out there all day. Tough pass. pass. Yeah, Tynan's pass is tipped and stolen by the Warriors. The tough bounce pass. Miner can't convert as he was too far underneath, but he will go to the line. I mean, Jordan Miner, does he have a motor or what? Uh, that's your center going up and down the floor. The Terriers were trying to break the 2-3 zone by going, flashing a man to the free throw line. But again, that's where the passing, Fletcher kind of had a soft pass to Garrett Pasco, and it was broken up easily. Jordan Miner, third team all Northeast Conference a year ago. He was third in the conference in rebounding with eight a game. He was fifth in the league with 25 blocks. He led the Warriors. He's actually led the Warriors with in blocks the last two years. 18 game season for Merrimack a year ago, similar to BU. Merrimack ended up nine and nine last season after their incredible run to the NEC regular season championship two years ago. So both of these teams won championships two years ago, but Merrimack was historic. The first Division I team ever to win a regular season conference title in their first year in Division I. Quite an accomplishment. It, it just, you can see that team. That was a very difficult team, and the Terriers know it well. McCoy, five to shoot, leans in, gets it back. Terriers with a new clock. But Good. their nine-point lead is now down to one. Suk Matone against the double, and he draws the contact. Justin Connolly came in to replace Miner, giving him a quick breather, and the Terriers on the offense. Because the Terriers, I mean, you talk about three games in Florida and that road trip in general. Yep. Come back here, and you have to play at that level again. You spoke about, oh, well, I want to say it was about eight minutes into the game, about how high the score was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there hasn't been much scoring since then, except by Merrimack. So they've got this right about where they want it at this point. Coming down to seven minutes to go in the first. Reed backs through, and what a move in the spin cycle by Ziggy Reed. Well, for Reed, we mentioned he had been 0 for 9, including the first two misses of this game. So for Ziggy Reed, that had to feel good. Get his first bucket in a couple of games now. Terriers back to their starting five now here under the seven minute mark. Shot clock at 10, and Matone throws it away. The Pass picked off by Malik Edmead. He is so quick into the front court. Gets it to Jordan McCoy. McCoy backing in on Brewster. Reed will try the triple. 
McCone the rebound. It's amazing when you have a heat check after one make, after struggling, but you just <laughs> want to feel good. But also with this Merrimack team right now, where is the offense coming from? We mentioned Connolly in the game, not really a scorer. He's in there to be the other backup big man to give Miner a break. This is usually where Mikey Watkins will take over the game. Stuke waiting for a double team. It doesn't come, and he draws the foul. He was waiting for another defender to come over, but Merrimack leaving Justin Connolly on Stuke, and Connolly commits the foul. They actually got McCoy for the region. Yeah, McCoy, you mentioned that it was late to come with a double team. Well, McCoy came very late and just slapped the arm, and it was an easy foul, and Stuke going to the free throw line. That's two now on McCoy to go along with Ziggy Reed and Jordan Miner, each with two personal fouls for Merrimack as Matone rattles in the first free throw. He'll have one more. Just Malcolm Chemezi for BU with two personals on the BU side. Stoop Matone has had double figures in either points or rebounds or both in six of the seven games so far this season for and, BU. And what I've really liked is his ability to pass. I, the Terriers have been talking about, you know, playing inside out. And that's got to go through Suk Matone. Four assists last game, two here in the early going of this one. You know, the offense, you'll see it go through Suk. Ed Mead with the tough move into the paint at 5'10", 165 pounds, made the NEC all-rookie team last year, averaged eight points a game in playing only 15 minutes a game for the Warriors, but he shot 50% from the floor in his freshman season. Great defense again by Merrimack that time when Suk picks up his dribble. It's much more active as they've dialed it up a notch. And a foul outside as Javante goes through with the motion anyway, but that was just for practice as Ed Mead gets called for the personal. And now a one and one coming up for Javante. So after the Terriers, who as we mentioned, went scoreless for nearly five minutes, to be able to now get some points at the free throw line, that's where the Terriers, this will be their ninth free throw attempt here in this first half. Look at Devin Jensen back into the game for Merrimack as Javante hits the first one. Terriers have only had four scorers in this game. Javante, Fletcher Tynan, Suk Matone, and Malcolm Chemezi. Something that we've seen throughout the course of this season is you get multiple players in the scorecard, everyone helping out, that the bench really did not provide a lift in that last sequence. McCoy with the two free throws. Javante's got 10 points already today. Jensen. Now Connolly. Connolly gives a screen for Reed. Reed plows in on Matone. That pass deflected alertly by Damon Tate. It'll still be Merrimack ball, but only eight seconds to shoot. Yeah, Damon getting some time now with the starting unit, playing as kind of that small forward, that number three and a chance for him to really percolate offensively. We saw what an ad he was in that game against Florida State. Oh, tough shot by Ed Mead over Javante McCoy, who is about seven inches taller than Ed Mead. Well, Ed Mead, you know, his speed is what it gets him, his quickness. And we saw that on the previous play when he was able to get to the rim. But it, the development of his jump shot, again, from freshman to sophomore campaign, those are the things that make you a real scorer. Jonas Harper with a nice fake to take Connolly out of the play. See if the Terriers can take advantage. They get it inside immediately, and now Damon Tate will go to the line. So Tate, after 12 points in the game against Florida State, looking for his first from the free throw line, as that's team now team foul number 10 on Merrimack. You mentioned the discrepancy in terms of free throws. They give up about 15 a game. Tate 12 have not shot well from the free throw line either, has Merrimack this season. But you and can see how they stay in games. Uh, they're, they're able to yep. make runs. They can get streaky, and they can hit shots when they need to. And this is a team that just, uh, they're, they're just tough. Uh, there's not a better word to describe them than just toughness. Tough to play against. Yes. Tate, one for two. There's always games on the schedule where you circle and you say, all right, this is a rivalry game, or this is a game I really don't want to play against them. And Merrimack, <laughs> I think, is that team for a lot of schools right now after they've seen us. Ed Mead working on Harper. 
it says something about how dangerous Ed Mead is that the Terriers would put Jonas Harper on him. Well, you just don't want any shooter going, getting going right now, and that's the reason why you put your stopper on him. Ed Mead finds Connolly this time with the great pass, but Connolly can't convert. Connolly, that was his first attempted field goal in the last 45 minutes of game action. He is, I told you, he's not there to be a scorer, but a great drop down pass, couldn't do anything with it. Terriers trying to build on a one point lead. Souk put the ball on the floor though, and Ed Mead is there to take it away. He finds Reed, and Reed meets Matone under the basket, and that whistle seemed a little, a little bit tardy. The foul will be on Souk Matone. That'll be games last season, giving his coaching staff and his teammates, something to get excited about heading into this season. Yeah, plays a similar role like Walter White, where he can play kind of that 3-4 position and really make, th make it difficult and can cause some mismatches against the teams that you play. This is the second lead of the game for Merrimack, their first since they led 2 to nothing, and that foul is going to be on Anthony Morales. Going over the back of Mikey Watkins Jr. So this allows Merrimack to go smaller because they have Miner and Ziggy Reed out there, and yet you still have the ability to go smaller with with these guards. And uh, I should excuse me, I apologize. It's Daring out there instead with Watkins as well as Jensen. So it's the starting unit out there for Merrimack. Watkins with the step back. The air ball is recovered by Miner, and he draws the foul and slips it in. What a shot by Jordan Miner. I'm not even sure he intended for that to be a shot that might go in, but he knew he was going to get fouled, and he just slipped it. Jonas Harper gets called for the personal. Now, Souk Matone w went out after that last media because he picked up his second personal. So Malcolm Chemezi right now, and this is where, you know, the loss of Nevin Zink, the loss of Walter White, yep. there, there's less resources at that big man position. Interestingly enough, that was what the Terriers thought were really their depth this year was the amount of kind of big bodies that they had. But certainly without Zink in this game and Walter White as well, the Terriers putting Malcolm back in there with two personal fouls. As I mentioned, that foul was on Harper, so he didn't pick up his third, but it was just Miner taking advantage inside. Bullet pass inside wow. for Chemezi, and the freshman gets two back at the other end. Good answer that time, and that was, you know, against, it wasn't even a zone. They just threw that in and let Chemezi go right to work. Quick move, quick decision by Malcolm. Jensen. Shot clock down to 10. Daring with the elbow jumper that connects. Well, Daring is their leading scorer, over 10 per game, but he's been relatively quiet in this one. Just two field goal attempts. He's made both of them. He now has five points. Before that bucket by Malcolm Chemezi a moment ago, Merrimack had put together a 19 to six extended run to take their largest lead of the game at four, and it's back to four right now. Shot clock at five. Javante hits again. Javante McCoy with a dozen. Well, and again, it's the Terriers need a basket, and you're going to your star, and Javante has accepted that role. I think in years past, Javante has been fine kind of playing off the ball. When it's his time to shoot, he'll get it, but he understands for this team to be really good, he needs to be able to stop those runs. He needs to be able to take control when things are starting to games in the first 16 days, but they will have had a week between games when BU comes in there on Wednesday night. Yeah, it's amazing to think how many games have come in just a short span this season. Reed draws the foul inside, and Anthony Morales might have taken a shot right to the midsection. He did. He is thinking about it over on the baseline now. He picks up his second personal. Yeah, although he is the one who took the brunt of that foul as Ziggy Reed just using his strength. And Morales is still there on the ground as the Terriers down by two. They led by as many as nine. That was midway through this first half at the 11.42 mark. They led 19 to 10 in this game. But as you mentioned, the extended run by Merrimack has given them a four point lead. That's their largest lead of the night. Terriers. Cut it back down again, but now free throws up coming for Reed as they are still tending to Anthony Morales. Yeah, BU players on the bench looking on intently at that end of the floor as Anthony Morales is having a conversation with BU athletic trainer Jessica Pierce, and he's now going to come off under his own power. But 
he definitely took a shot to the midsection somewhere in that exchange. Yeah, and you hope that it's just kind of getting the wind knocked out of you and you just are able to come back after a few seconds. But uh, it's with the Terriers, with all of the injuries they've had this season, you, you just you, you hate seeing any of that. We talked about several times this year, we've talked about the Terriers deep bench and carrying a big roster again for the second year in a row. BU with 17 players on the roster, including walk-ons. But for this game, BU has only 10 scholarship players available with White, Zink, and Ethan Britton Watts all out. Ziggy Reed has had himself a really nice first half. Again, he has not shot the ball well. We mentioned he was 0 for 7 last game. He's only 1 for 6 shooting, but he's been very active offensively, gets himself to the free throw line. He's got five points, and as we mentioned, Merrimack has more overall scorers in this game than the Terriers do. Again, it's a four-point lead for Merrimack, coming down to the final minute of that first half. That last time out was taken by Merrimack. The Terriers still have their use it or lose it timeout if they want to use one coming down the stretch here. They feed Chemezi again inside before the move. The foul is on Ziggy Reed. Oh, nope, they got Connolly, Connolly that time. Well, that's the one he should have gotten earlier. Well, Con <laughs> yeah, Connolly now has two as well. So the, the issue for foul trouble for Merrimack, we mentioned there are a number of players with two personal fouls, and Connolly gets his second. It's two free throws coming up for Malcolm Chemezi as well. Malcolm with four points already today. And Ooh. throwing the air ball, which reminds me that that was one of the elements. There were so many things to talk about after that great game we saw at Florida State last Wednesday. But one element that we didn't talk about really very much was because that free throw at the end of regulation was so far off to the right by Polite for Florida State, he almost missed the rim completely. Had he missed the rim, the Terriers would have had to inbound the ball from the baseline instead of getting that continuous play that resulted in the big three by Morales. Ziggy Reed, talk about a big three. And now it's a six point Merrimack lead. We'll see if BU uses their time out here. And now full court pressure. The Terriers have been used to this the last three games they saw from everybody. And Joe Jones waiting to get over the timeline before he calls his time out. between the game clock and the shot clock. Incidentally, we do not have the shot clock on the screen for you today. Apologize for that. That's the game clock you're looking at. Underneath or to the foul line for Tynan, and that's a shot clock violation. Great defense by Merrimack, and on the run out, Jensen creates the contact on Garrett Pasco. Garrett to be called for the foul. This is going to, well, are they going to give him the shooting motion here? Yes, they are. So it'll be two free throws coming up for Devin Jensen. Yeah, Pasco this time was not able to get in position. He was just kind of getting back and slid right underneath Jensen. And this, uh, you look at the way this first half has gone, Doug, and you look at the Terrier offense, just 11 points in the last 11.42. You look at the way this game started, we were saying, wow, this seems like it's a high scoring affair, but it really clamped down, did Merrimack, and the Terriers shooting under 50% from the field now, eight for 17. One for two for Jensen, the three-quarter free throw line. But see, that shot, you're just talking about shooting with confidence, and sometimes that's the way the game is played, that after you know being up by nine, that shot's going down. Down seven, you're just a little short on that. Watkins with the move, but can't hit the shot. So an empty trip for each team to start the second half. But Merrimack outscoring BU 27 to 11 over the last 12 minutes of that first half. Yeah, it was just a complete turn of events. And that's how you look at Wade and say, how does Merrimack win games? How are they have a winning record? It's you can play 12 minute stretches like that. Great idea with the bounce pass, Fletcher Tynan into Suk Matone, and he is fouled. That's been a recurring theme throughout the day. Suk drawing a bunch of fouls inside. This one on Devin Jensen. That's his second. And pretty much everybody out there for Merrimack has two at this point. They have five players now with, or make it four players now with two fouls. BU also four players with two here early in the second the, half. The Terriers just inbounded back into the backcourt after getting it from under out of bounds. That's where you'd like to see the Terriers be able to execute an under out of bounds, get points off of that. Nice up fake by Jonas Harper, and he rushed the shot. 
trying to beat the buzzer, and it's a shot clock violation and another BU turnover. Yeah, we saw Jonas have a ridiculous finish in the in the Jacksonville Classic going up and under the rim. This time, though, couldn't get that spin and didn't hit the rim either, so a turnover here to start the second half as well. So that's turnover number eight for BU in the game, which again, for this point of the game, compared to what yes. they've been doing earlier this season is not that bad. And the Terriers create a turnover at the other end on the steal from Miner. BU needs to break the ice at the offensive end now. The re-entry to Suk Matone working on Miner. Can't hit the shot. Oh, just amazing footwork by the big man. You want to talk about fundamentals and how he's thrown? Watch that move, the drop step, keeping that pivot and then going up and under. Unfortunately, he just couldn't finish it. And now a traveling violation on Ziggy Reed. Reed was a huge impact in that the end of that first half as well. All nine of his points came in that last 10 minutes as well. This has just been a festival of mistakes here in the first two minutes plus of the second half. It makes it really easy to analyze the game though, Dub. I'll tell you that much. You can <laughs> say what should happen as opposed to what did happen. Bounce pass into Fletcher Tynan. Tough catch for Fletcher, and he is fouled on the bump by Mikey Watkins. So quickly, another Merrimack player with two fouls now, and that's two on the team already in this half. I, I like what Joe Jones said at halftime. They lull you to sleep, and then they attack you. Yep. You kind of feel that pace, and I think Joe Jones is, you know, when he was talking to his team, and certainly in Florida, he mentioned pace being a huge factor in the game. The Terriers have not played at their pace in this one either. BU's not gotten out in transition at all. He told us before the game that we, he really needs this team to take their chances in transition. Fletcher Tynan thought about the elbow move. Five to shoot for BU. Somebody's got to put it up. It's Miles Brewster way off target. So the Terriers with another empty trip to start this second half. And Miner is beating everyone down the floor. So whether it's a four or five, someone's got to sprint back because Miner is beating every Terrier down the floor right now. Mikey Watkins working on Brewster. Shot clock already down to 10 and Watkins with the left hand makes it a nine point Merrimack lead. You know, they'll take the shot clock down to five or six and that's where Mikey Watkins can use his quickness. And remember the Terriers, the last time these two teams played, BU won in North Andover, but they struggled with Mikey Watkins. Another missed shot for BU. That was a hook by Suk Matone. No help this time. Merrimack was letting him play one-on-one. -on -one. I think Suk and everyone in here was a little surprised. So now it's a full turnaround. A nine-point BU lead in the first half. Now Merrimack leads by nine. And Reed makes it a dozen. I know run dating back to the first half, extending over five minutes now. Suk Matone pushed off his spot by Miner, but Suk gets it to go. A much needed hoop for the Terriers. Yeah, good strength that time. And again, now you get your bucket, and now let's see if things kind of turn for the Terriers. But you needed to stop that run. Merrimack has had a few of these, you know, these spurts that the Terriers have not had answers for. We could be watching a little history here today, Brian. This is only the eighth game between these two teams as the offensive foul is called on Merrimack as Michael Daring gets called. Matone misses the bunny inside. Well, he and Miner have both missed one now. I mean, we're talking about point blank range. Miner missed one in the first half, and now Suk here in the second half. So as I started to say before the timeout, this is only the eighth meeting before uh, between these two teams. BU has won all seven to this point, including the game two years ago in North Andover when the Terriers just escaped with a 69-67 win. Walter White had a big three in the final minute of that game. Javante McCoy had a big stop on Mikey Watkins to help the cause. But the Terriers in some trouble here, down by 10 on their own floor. If they want to stay unbeaten against Merrimack, they're going to have to come up with something here at home. After that BU foul on Jonas Harper, Watkins misses the three. And if you're just joining us, the Terriers without Nevin Zink, without Walter White, and without Ethan Britton Watts, all three injured for this game and unavailable. Walter White did warm up prior to the game, but just was not able to go. And all three with sprained ankles. Yeah. And they happened in three consecutive games, all in all three games of that Florida trip. As Morales misses inside, but 
Gets another chance maybe after the offensive rebound, and now he'll get a chance for three. Well, Morales is one of those guys right now, you just see when he gets going, good things happen. And Morales was frustrated that he missed that first attempt. Great pass inside by Suk Matone. We'll see if they give him another assist on that one as Morales then was able to finish a strong finish inside and a chance for a three-point play. That's foul number two on Ziggy Reed. Yeah, and the Terriers just struggling to find somebody who can kind of heat up offensively right. now, Brian. In the first half, Fletcher Tynan got off to a good start. Javante McCoy got off to a good start. But the Terriers have had trouble scoring since the first eight minutes of the game. That old-fashioned three for Morales is now a 5-0 BU run to pull them within seven. Yeah, it's interesting. In the first half, when it was the bench that came in, that kind of slowed things down for the Terriers offensively. Here in the second half, you're hoping Morales and Garrett Pasco can really help kind of light the fire under the Terrier offense. Those were the first three points of the day for Anthony Morales, who had eight points, including that incredibly dramatic game-trying three at the buzzer in regulation in Tallahassee the other night. BU called for the reach in there, the basket won't count. Well, Jonas Harper, you talk about getting the crowd excited over defense. He picks up his third personal, but everyone in the gym was applauding as Jonas Harper was just guarding Malik and Mead the entire time. Watkins. So now they go away from Ed Mead. Ed Mead now on the right side, trying to play on the left side with Watkins and McCoy. Ziggy Reed keeps his dribble alive now. Way outside is Jordan McCoy. That wasn't even close to the rim. Javante's saying, don't ruin my good name right now. <laughs> I'm almost wondering if that shot was altered somehow that was so far off. McCoy, the Terriers are being relentless here, Brian, and trying to feed the post. After that slow start offensively in the second half, Suk Matone's been getting a lot of touches. Well, it's a good thing, especially against the zone, and not to mention when you're trying to move the basketball, when you can work inside out, better things happen. This Merrimack team, when they can dig in defensively, they're very good, hands in the passing lanes. So you gotta keep moving the ball, especially inside out. Like just there on, yeah. Jordan Har on uh, Jonas Harper, who almost turned it over. Now Morales, bullet pass to McCoy in traffic. Back to Anthony. 4-3, oh man, he gets rewarded after that incredible pass, but it didn't convert into a shot. Instead, Morales hits his own three. Well, when someone pays the bill, there's the spark. I mean, <laughs> he, he, he just gets going in a hurry, and let's see if he can have that sort of same fun foundation that he had against Hartford. So it's now an eight nothing BU run. The Terriers get called for another foul here, and that was gonna be on Garrett Pasco. That'll be three on Garrett and Jordan Harper, oh, Jordan Harper, <laughs> Jonas Harper is gonna come out now with his three fouls for BU. Yeah, Jonas looked exhausted after that stretch. I mean, he's been averaging, playing about 27 minutes in each of the last three, but that hard-nosed defense, you can just see it's exhausting on him. Ed Mead wants to go on Brewster and causes the contact. The shot had no chance, but he drew the foul and Ed Mead will go to the line. The foul is on Brewster. Well, one of the things, besides kind of lulling you with their dribbles, the other thing that they do is they almost show the ball. Like, I dare you to take it. Get your hand in the cookie jar and see what happens. Brewster went for it, and then the quick crossover by Ed Mead, and he was able to get back to his left hand and get to the rim. He was able, he beat Miles Brewster. That's why the foul was called. Boy, it did not take the Terriers long to put that 8-0 run together to get back in this thing. Yeah, just three minutes, 10 seconds. That Merrimack just ended that scoreless streak with the first free throw. And really those eight points were in a lot less than three minutes and yeah. 10 seconds because they all came together at the end of that drought. Anthony Morales with six of those. Two free throws for Merrimack. BU trailing by six. And a whistle away from the ball and that's gonna be on Conley, I believe, inside as he was trying to defend Suk Matone in the post. One thing these officials have not allowed is the pushing and shoving inside. We've even seen it with the guards. We saw it was Devin Jensen trying to go up against Jonas Harper. They called the foul on Jonas as well. So they've been consistent with not allowing that kind of physical play in the paint. That's three on Connolly now for Merrimack. Matone keeps his pivot foot, turns it over, but he got fouled again. Was it Connolly again? No, this one was at Meade. He even put his hand up saying, that was me, I reached in. 
And Mead, who got who had gotten a steal before on Sook, this time hit the hand. I will say, though, Connolly had kind of a disgusted look on his face when the whistle blew. He thought maybe it was Well, any time there's <laughs> contact in the post, the big man automatically right. assumes it's his fault. The deep pass in for Javante McCoy. Yep. Again, under out of bounds. The Terriers get nothing out of that. They go back to the top of the key. Fresh 20 for BU. McCoy with the right elbow. And it's productive. So Javante just going one-on-one. -on -one. He's got 14 now, his first bucket here in the second half. Yeah, those are his first points in a while. And he had 12 pretty early in the game. Coming down to 12 minutes to play in this one, now a four-point game. Conley has his pass picked off. And Brewster gets fouled on the way up the floor by Ed Mead. Nope, they call it just kickball, just okay. kickball. It'll All be right. Terrier basketball when we return here to the roof. Merrimack 44, BU 40. You're listening and watching on ESPN. Javante has done his part. He has 14 points in this game, and I've done my part in doing the addition. He now has 1,451 career points, putting him five away. Did I do that wrong already? I was yeah, going to say. Four away. No, it's four, yeah. yeah you, four I was going to say, do you, do you need an aspirin now, Brian? Are you <laughs> From okay? From being number 10 <laughs> all time on BU's scoring list, as DJ Irving is ahead of him at number 10 at 1456, just four points shy now of taking over that spot. The Terriers turn the ball over after the timeout. Merrimack trying to capitalize, and the three from the corner for Jordan McCoy. So he straightened out his range after that air ball a moment ago. Yeah, what an open look. There was the penetration and dish, and that was the problem the Terriers had with these Merrimack guards. With their quickness, you just needed another one to cover, and it led to open looks. Merrimack by seven now. Miles Brewster will try the mid-range. Miles still looking for his first points in his first college start. Again, there's a soft spot in the zone, and that was you know about 16 feet away, an open look, but the Terriers can't capitalize. Ed Mead with the quick release. Everything he does seems to be quick. Yes. His pace is something different. It's kind of a different pace than what Merrimack plays at on the offensive end in general. Brewster will try the three. That might have been deflected on the way up, but Miner secures the rebound. Terriers going with a quick shot that time. Merrimack, incidentally, already at 16 fouls, so the Terriers could be shooting one and one shortly. BU with only four fouls in this half, and on the drive, Watkins gets bumped by Anthony Morales. And again, there's your guard being able to keep his dribble, get through the first line of defense as the Terriers switch, and then against Anthony Morales, you can kind of pick against that matchup, and that's exactly what Watkins did on that occasion. Brian still needs a minute or two to recover after attempting to do math <laughs> a moment ago, but he does have the Twitter feed up and running. If you would like to interact with us, it's at BUB Ball Radio at BUB Ball Radio on Twitter. Ryan live tweets during the game, although he may need a couple minutes rest here. Uh, I, I need my own timeout. Where's the next media timeout? <laughs> Another three attempt for McCoy again in front of his own bench. And just like that, the Merrimack lead is back to 10. Uh, the amount of swings in this game. We were talking about, you know, it's a game of runs, but the swings have been 6 0, 8 0, 10 0, 10 2 runs. There have been a lot of them in this game. Terriers desperately in need of a good shot. And Terriers instead, got bailed they, out. they get a foul, and that's going to be a one and one with team foul number seven on Merrimack. Yeah, that ball hit the floor. That was a break for the Terriers. Let's see if they can cash in. Merrimack hitting two threes by McCoy and then trying to ratchet up on the defensive end. So uh, it's amazing how these two teams very similar. Defense leading to offense. Defense will spark their offense as well. Jordan McCoy had only five threes on the season coming into this game. Merrimack goes on to win this game, Brian. We may look back on those two threes by McCoy as the big shots of the game. Well, that and I also think of Ziggy Reed, who had been struggling mightily with yep. a shot under 20% yep. from the field. Him getting going. I mean, these are good signs for Joe Gallo. Suk Matone hits both free throws. Still a long ways, and this was, you know, the midway point now of the second half. This is where things changed in the first half for BU going the other way, where Merrimack, after BU had a nine-point lead, 19 to 10, Merrimack took over the rest of the first half. I believe that last foul was on Miner. It was his third. 
He's got the ball now. And way too strong with the shot over Suk Matone. Good rebound by Damon Tate. Terriers again have to control the glass too. Harper has his shot deflected. That one was definitely partially blocked by Devin Jensen off the hand of Jonas Harper. Good so defense, just flying out at him. McCoy, the hot shooter, gives it up this time to Watkins. 9.15 to go. Merrimack by eight. BU led by as many as nine in the first half. McCoy again, not this time. Uh, that time just a rush shot. Again, they, they were trying to use the shot clock. Mikey Watkins very happy dribbling out on the perimeter. Damon Tate gets it back out. Terriers trying to put buckets together again. Devin Jensen does a great job coming out high on that 2-3 zone. Or points together, I should say, after the made free throws. Fletcher Tynan, a three in front of his bench. So another 5-0 BU run to cut it to five. Tynan now in double figures. He's got 10. That's three out of the last four games. Fletcher has been in double figures. Another spark with Suk Matone and now Fletcher. Those, the big men really capitalizing in different ways for the Terriers. Jensen. McCoy cuts through the lane and the Terriers deflect the pass out of bounds. I am curious now, you know, with eight minutes to go, Jonas Harper got a breather earlier. Is he going to get another one? Because the defense he has played, I mean, this is a guy that just uses it all on the defensive end. Yep. But the Terriers need him as a scorer. He always finds himself open in corners. I'm curious to see if he'll get another breather at some point in this contest. Jordan McCoy comes out for Merrimack now after hitting those two big threes. Ziggy Reed is back in. Watkins throws up a wild shot. The Terriers on the run out. They haven't had many of these. And Fletcher Tynan! Hangs and scores. What a beautiful play by Fletch. Credit Devin Jensen. He just went straight up in the air. But Fletcher Tynan, that's where your offense beats the defense. The ability to hang and be agile to get the shot you want off of that. And the Terriers, here they go again. It's a 7-0 run. Back and forth we go here at the roof with 7.40 to go in the game. Who has the last run in this game? That's what it may come down to. Nice interior pass to Miner, and he gets the foul called on the season, are averaging almost nine threes a game. They have only five in this game here today. I'm insulted, but it's a good point, so <laughs> I think we could just play on here. But no, you're right, three-point shooting, especially against the zone, is a huge part of it. And the Terriers, you know, they were so content, or making sure they did not want to just throw up threes, but that's still a big part of this team's offense. After ah. the free throw by Miner, now a steal by Mikey Watkins. He waits for the contact but Damon Tate wisely lets Watkins go. And those are the turnovers we've talked about, the, the, the inaction turnovers that just, it, it's too easy. It's a steal and it's coast to coast layup. Those are just detrimental. And now two straight turnovers wow. by the Terriers coming off that, that timeout. I was just about to say that was BU's 10th turnover and now they have 11. And remember the way this game started, turnovers were not a factor in the way this team started the game. BU did not get their first turnover until six and a half minutes into the contest, but they pile up quickly. And that's something that I know they're still working on. 10 to shoot, Watkins fires a bounce bullet pass, which you don't see very often. And Miner gets fouled, he'll get two more, Fletcher Tynan with his first foul of the game. Well, now they've been doing a lot more of the screening action with Miner. Because they know the Terriers have been switching, they're saying, okay, well, we'll play with our guard and see what you guys do. If Suk Matone's gonna come out on me, and this time Fletcher ended up on Miner, then they're gonna try to take advantage. And with their guard play, they are so good. And that was the problem even two years ago. When you get into that ball screen defense and you've got a guy like Mikey Watkins who can hang on to the basketball, he can float it, he can shoot it. It makes it so tough because all he's doing is playing. Ball screen and you're just playing and saying, where can I get my offense from? He does such an amazing job as the orchestrator for this Merrimack offense. Merrimack taking advantage of the back-to-back -back BU turnovers to put together a 5-0 run of their own to get that lead back up to eight. Again, another run. We, we've seen two, we've seen so many of these. No one's been able to get a bucket after a, no one trading baskets. Jonas Harper gets another three attempt blocked and Miner ends up sitting on the BU bench. I, I can't remember one player getting blocked twice from the three point line in the same game. Th that one's new for me. I have not seen that. Two different players, Jensen got him as well as now Miner. 
as again, three blocks in this game now from Aramac. I believe Miner ended up right in the lap of Ethan Britton Watts over on the BU bench. That's the last thing the Terriers need is to have somebody get hurt just sitting on the bench. And Ethan's already got the strained <laughs> ankle. So that's a big three right there by Javante McCoy. And he is now tied with DJ Irving for 10th place all time on BU's scoring list. And another answer for Javante McCoy. When the Terriers have needed a bucket, the ball has been in the hands of, you know, Suk Matone when they can get it inside, or else Javante, a smooth looking three pointer. He's three for three from beyond the arc. Trying to answer and getting it done. Michael Daring from three. Well, Daring, as we mentioned, he's only gotten three field goal attempts in this game. He's a perfect three for three. He's their leading scorer, averaging 10 points a game. Just has not gotten touches with the defense by Jonas Harper. Jamin Tate allowed to drive right in, but Miner gets the block. Jamin keeps working hard, and then Miner takes it away. Miner has been stout on the defensive end these last few possessions. That was just um, a man among men right there. I mean, that was just a big time play. Gets the block, stays with it, then the strip steal all without fouling. I, that's, that's textbook defense by Jordan Miner. Reed trying to back in on Damon Tate. Muscles travel. his way in, gets doubled and traveled. Yeah, he definitely took the double team, but when doing so, he kind of just did the, you know, the Fred Flintstone with his feet trying to get rid of the ball. and. An easy turnover. Let's see if the Terriers can capitalize. We've talked about Merrimack scoring on each of the last two turnovers by BU. Merrimack, any dead ball now we've seen in the second half, they've come out with this full court pressure, but the Terriers break it. Not this time for Javante. Souk can't get the rebound. Still plenty of time with 4.40 to go. I mean, heck, the Terriers came back from eight down in, with 45 seconds in Tallahassee last Wednesday, but time will soon become a factor for BU as they have trailed for this entire second half. And Since Merrimack will just, they're, they're gonna run out the clock yep. every time, every yep. single time, no hurry. And unlike Florida State, they'll probably have a little bit more success doing it. A little reach in, poked by McCoy, and the Terriers get the shot clock violation. Kind of a tough break there. As you gotta the let them go. Blows. Yeah, they should have been a play on there as McCoy seemed to have possession when the buzzer went off. Yeah, they're saying you didn't have full possession right there, and that's the reason for it. So it was end up just being a loose ball and the shot clock violation. So Merrimack able to set up their defense. Maybe Merrimack won't be able to freeze the I ball. I was just gonna say, after you said that, you're doing the <laughs> broadcaster curse again. I've been good at that this year. <laughs> Matone inside. Oh, what a hook shot by Suk Matone falling away to bring BU within six. I don't even eat Skittles, but there's gotta be something at the end of that rainbow <laughs> shot right there. My goodness, that had some arc to it. Merrimack by six. And here we go, they're gonna just wait out here as well. Now he's trying, but then he'll just bring it back out and another turnover. Wow, Mikey Watkins, I thought the same thing. That's killer, that's absolutely killer. Terriers just have to dig in defensively, hope they can keep the score where it is here. Merrimack has turned it over the last two times they've had it. Reed. Now Watkins. And the ball tipped away again. Another steal by BU. And a third straight turnover. This one resulting in a foul on Miner. And that will put BU at the line for a one and one. And that's number four on Miner as well. So let's see. I mean, you expect that you're going to play him out here with 352 to go. But at the same time, that's a big one picked up by Miner, not allowing the fast break. But it is a one and one upcoming for Fletcher Tynan now as the Terrier is trying to inch closer here, this time with the clock stopped. And Fletcher comes up short. So another empty trip for BU. And the lead is still six for the Warriors. Yeah, Fletcher has played 25 minutes in this contest, so you wonder if tired legs as that one came up well short. Miner now playing with four fouls. Reed fires an elbow on Fletcher Tynan. Make that the fourth straight turnover offensively for Merrimack. Offensive foul call. Yeah, that one, you just kind of felt like Ziggy Reed was thinking it's desperation mode that they have to score. And th this is where teams talk about being able to finish closing out a game. Terriers overcame that against Hartford and then Northern Illinois and Sam Houston. But Merrimack right now seeing what happens when a team comes back in the game. Terriers just have to start catching in here, Brian. Yep. They've had these opportunities. They have not been able to take advantage. 
Let's see what Souk Matone can do. There comes the double team, and the foul will be called on the reach-in by Mikey Watkins. So now it's a double bonus situation for BU for the rest of the game, the 10th personal on Merrimack. Terriers 14 of 18 from the line. Merrimack over their average. They've gotten 17 free throw attempts in this contest. But the Terriers need to cash in to be able to keep this game at striking distance as Stu hits the first. It's amazing after the way this game started, Brian, with both teams hitting shots and BU getting out to that early nine-point lead. Here we are, two minutes to go. Game in the 50s, exactly what Merrimack wants. Well, it, it's interesting also, Doug, that you mentioned that Merrimack is looking for their first win in the series against BU. In every game in this series, BU has put up 69 points or more. Doesn't look like that's coming close to that unless this one was to play extra time. Of course, most of those BU wins were while well, Merrimack was not a Division right. I team, but still, this would be an important moment for the Warriors if they're able to bring this one to the finish line and get their first win against BU. Especially after losing that heartbreaker two years ago. That was a rush three by Daring, and BU has it back after the two made free throws by Souk Matone. Execution down the stretch. This is where a senior-led team is usually a good sign. Matone, after faking a couple of passes, will try it himself on Miner. Can't hit the shot. The battle for the ball, and it's going to stay with BU. And they'll reset it to 20 on the shot clock as the Terriers try to make it a one-possession game here. A good heads up by the Terriers because they clear it out for him. Suk will go to work. Keeps his pivot foot, spins twice, and scores! And one! What a move by Souk Matone! And he has a chance by hitting the free throw of a three-point play. And I shouldn't say what a move, I should say an assortment of moves Mikey, by the big man. Mikey Watkins has to be careful. His, his reaction to the official almost got him teed up. Good job that they did not give him a technical. But Watkins was the one who picks up his fourth foul for reaching in. But Souk just staying with it, even against the shot clock, the poison control to finish that bucket. But he cannot finish the three-point play. So it's a two-point game as we go into a minute to go. It's been a long time since we've seen a one-possession game here. As Merrimack has been in control for a long time. And for the second straight game, we're seeing a team trying to bleed the clock here, this time with just a two-point lead. Watkins finds Miner with two on the shot clock. That time, it worked to, possess, uh, to perfection for Merrimack. Well, it worked to perfection because Mikey Watkins actually brought the ball into the paint, brought BU over, and then made a great pass. Again to Matone for BU. Souk with 15 points now for the Terriers. Shot clock at 12, McCoy almost lost it. Pasco, nice feed underneath to Javante and misses the fall away. Souk gets the rebound, and that's going to be it for Jordan Miner. Yep. That'll be his fifth foul, and Souk Matone is going back to the line. So Jordan Miner will get the DQ after 16 points to go along with seven rebounds. Miner, his last two games, we mentioned coming off his first double double of the season when he had 25 and 12. A good follow up. He, uh, he was eight for nine from the free throw line. So now what, 17 of 19 from the charity stripe the last two days. But that is it for Jordan Miner. And now the Terriers with 20 and a half seconds left. They have 17 fouls. So the Terriers will try to get the steal, but then you've got a foul and hope for a one out of, you know, hope for a miss on the one and one from Merrimack. Jordan Miner getting the congratulations all the way down that Merrimack bench as well he should. As Souk hits the first free throw, Joe Gallo had a great quote when he recruited Jordan Miner, who's now a junior, as we get another look at Souk going to work. Watch the footwork here. Keep the pivot. That's all you got to do. Somehow keep that pivot foot. Just an amazing display. Souk hits both free throws to make it a two-point game again. 20.5 seconds to go. And let's see. The Terriers will, if the Terriers use one of their timeouts, they only have one left, I should say. Merrimack has three timeouts to go. Terriers will inbound, oh, excuse me, Merrimack will inbound, Terriers will full court press. They get it into Ed Mead. He's double teamed and a foul is called. Pasco and Tynan had the trap on Ed Mead 
And the foul's going to be on Fletcher. Ed Mead at the free throw line here in a crucial one and one. Oh, the Terriers thought they got that steal clean, but Fletcher was called. Basically, what they were showing was that he had hit some of the hand as he was trying to take it out of the hand of Ed Mead. Ed Mead brought the ball up over his head. And again, even a five foot ten, very easy for Fletcher. That's at his, you know, at his chest, basically, <laughs> to be able to rip that ball away. Jared Pasco still pleading his case to no avail. And once again, at least on this front end, not a person on the line. Merrimack not known for their rebounding, but they are going without anyone on the line again. Why have I seen this story before? Again, this is a one and one, and there's the miss by Ed Mead. The Terriers have it back, trailing by two. They have a timeout if they want it. McCoy goes to Matone. Souk trying to spin on Conley. Out to Javante for three! With 2.6 seconds left, BU takes the lead for the first. He goes to Reed. He's double teamed deep in the corner, and the Terriers.